So hello everyone welcome to Positron Academy and today's topic of discussion is on oxygen effect and the tumor microenvironment. So before we go and talk more about this presentation let us try to understand some basic concept. So first question is what's the importance of oxygen in uh, in treating tumors. So the answer is the response of these cells to ionizing radiation like gamma rays or x-ray the response of cells it strongly depends on the presence of oxygen as you can see in this graph over here that uh, there's a graph uh, there's a graph between uh, uh, surviving fraction and radiation dose and you can see that for hypoxic cell the curve looks like this and for oxic cells the curve is much more steeper and we can see that for treating hypoxic cells we need higher radiation doses and for treating oxic cells we need lower radiation doses and we can see that uh, the presence of oxygen has enhanced the cell killing and the announcement of radiation damage by oxygen is dose modifying that is the radiation dose that gives a particular level of cell survival is reduced by approximately the same factor at all levels of survival. And now we define one term which we call as the oxygen enhancement ratio and that's a ratio between the radiation dose in hypoxia to the radiation dose in air or in, or in oxy condition. That's what we call as the oxygen enhancement ratio. But now the question is how do we calculate it so we calculate it for a defined um, biological endpoint or, or a defined clinical endpoint so for example uh, let us try to calculate the the OER for this defined uh, clinical endpoint of of cerebral fraction equals to 0 0.01 so that's our cerebral fraction 0 0.01 and at this fraction we try to understand we try to calculate this OER so so we need about 28 gray of radiation to treat or to kill or to reduce the cells from SF equals to 1 to SF equals to 0 0.01 and for killing the same fraction of cell under oxy conditions we need about 10 gray for the same survival fraction of 0 0.01 so that ratio is about 2.8 so that's the and this ratio is what we call as the oxygen enhancement ratio and regarding what is over here uh, we'll talk about um, more as we go inside the presentation in more detail so that's the graph between um, over here and the partial pressure of oxygen and by definition this OER under anoxy condition is e equals to 1 and as you keep on increasing the partial pressure of oxygen we can see there is a change in OER so as you keep on changing the partial pressure of oxygen the OER also keep on increasing fine and uh, one more thing you can see that that the rise of this OER is not is in is, is in a defined range. So from 0.5 to 20 mm of Hg, we can see the highest change of OER with change in partial pressure of oxygen. So within this range, we can see how OER changes with changes in partial pressure, and after that. It, it attains a plateau or it, it attains a saturation so that is um, with the increase in partial pressure now that is not significant changes in OER although there are some changes in OER but still uh, the changes in OER is very less so as you keep on increasing partial pressure beyond uh, 30 mm of Hg there is not significant changes in OER or if there are changes there is some small changes in OER after 30 mm of Hg that is delta OER and this scale over here that's a partial pressure of oxygen and this is plotted in a logarithmic scale to demonstrate the cells which have a partial pressure below 0 0.15 and we can see their partial pressure those cells which have uh, partial pressure below uh, 0.15 mm Hg they have OER uh, 
uh, equals to 1 so and those cells are maximally resistant to radiation so now let us try to understand OER in more detail so what is OER I guess we have already explained about what is OER that's the uh, that's the ratio between a radiation dose in hypoxia to the radiation dose in air and that ratio is what we call is the oxygen enhancement ratio and from this equation if we go and find out uh, what's the radiation dose in air that's equals to 1 by over times radiation dose in hypoxia for example you have a tumor over here and and you need 30 gray of radiation to treat the tumor to a defined clinical endpoint and um, what you have done next you have by some means we have increased the oxygen tension of the of this tumor from x mm hg to suppose 10 mm hg so if we go and check out from this last diagram we can see as you keep on increasing the partial pressure of oxygen there is increasing the oxygen enhancement ratio so what we have done basically we have increased the um, the oxygen tension of this tumor from x mm of hg to 10 mm of hg so as you keep on increasing the partial pressure of oxygen there is increase in OER so from for 10 mm of hg the OER is about uh, 2 point something let it be 2 so what we have done we have increased the oxygen enhancement ratio to 2 so we need 30 degree of radiation that's that's 30 degree so how much dose do you need now to treat the same tumor which is now oxic because we have increased the tension of oxygen fine so that's equals to 1 by oer times the radiation dose in hypoxia and that's 1 by 2 of 30 gray and that's 15 gray so now for treating the same tumor you need 15 gray that's evident from here so as the cell has oxic so as you keep on increasing the oxygen tension you need lower radiation dose for the same clinical endpoint and for hypoxic cells you need a higher radiation dose fine and as you keep on further increasing this OER for example now we have increased this OER which was 10 now we have increased to 100 400 that's about 2.5 fine so let me 3 so for uh, you have increased the uh, partial pressure such that the OER becomes uh, 3 then the dose you require is uh, dose in oxic that's equals to 1 by 3 times 30 equals to uh, 10 gray so as you keep on increasing the OER the radiation dose in air keep on decreasing so you can achieve the same uh, clinical endpoint with lower radiation doses so that, uh, because um, because oxygen is increasing the radio sensitivity of the tumor to ionizing radiation and that's what uh, we can see from this graph so as you keep on increasing the partial pressure of oxygen the OER keep on increasing and also the radio sensitivity keep on increasing so that's over here so as you keep on increasing the partial pressure of oxygen the OER keep on increasing and also the radio sensitivity keep on increasing and the OER for x-rays is about 3 for most cells and this OER it depends also on LET what is LET that's linear energy transfer that is energy transfer per unit length of the track fine so as LET keep on increasing the OER keep on decreasing so that's the graph between OER and LET so that's uh, about, that's how RBE or relative biological effectiveness changes with LET so as RB keep on increasing the uh, as, uh, as LET keep on increasing RB keep on increasing and it's RB attains the maximum at around 100 kV per micrometer of LET and after that RB keep on decreasing and for OER that's vice versa so like RB keep on increasing on increasing LET but where does OER keep on decreasing on increasing LET and the rise of this RB and the fall of this OER occurs at around the same LET about 100 kV per uh, micrometer so as LET increases OER reduces for example the OER for X-rays or for electrons that's 3 for higher LET neutrons that's 1.6 
and for heavy particles like alpha particles or carbonines this um, oer becomes equals to 1 so as let keep on increasing the oer keep on decreasing so as let rises the oer drops so what is oer equals to 1 it means radiation dose in hypoxia radiation dose in hypoxia is equal to radiation dose in oxic it means that if we treat any tumor with alpha particles or with carbon ions so then it is the oxygen concentration or oxygen partial pressure is independent so there will be same cell killing whether this, uh, whether the tumor is oxic or not fine that's the main implementation of the same so as the let keep on increasing the oer keep on decreasing and for and in this case you can see that as let has increased further more than 100 kV per micrometer oer has dropped and it attains the value of 1 it means the radiation dose in hypoxia is equal to radiation dose in oxic and that's the uh, graph uh, between or relationship between oer and the partial pressure of oxygen and this curve it starts from 1 and that's for hypoxic condition and we can see the biggest change of this curve occurs at the range of uh, 0.5 to 20 mo of ag and within this range you can see uh, a greatest change of this over here as a function of uh, partial pressure change of oxygen and after that we can see uh, and uh, we can see a near plateau at around 30 mo of ag and uh, even if you keep on increasing the partial pressure of oxygen then there is a slight increase in oer but not a drastic increase in oer like as we can see from here as you keep on changing this oer there was there was a huge change in um, oer with increasing partial pressure of oxygen but in this case after 30 mo of hg more you keep on increasing the partial pressure that is a significant or slight change in oer and that's the uh, range of physiological blood oxygen tension in, in venous and arterial uh, blood and thus we can see that from a radiobiological standpoint that most normal tissues it can be considered well oxygenated but still there is some moderate hypoxia and that's a feature in some normal tissue also like for cartilage for skin they have some moderate hypoxia too so that's the initial paper on the effect of oxygen on the radio sensitivity and the use of oxygen in therapy. So that's by uh, P. Howard Planters in which they uh, uh, examined the effect of breathing oxygen on radio sensitivity of the rabbit glands and the use of oxygen in X-ray therapy. And in this paper, they explained some uh, crucial points. So that's some quotation from this paper that they pointed out that any part of the tumor which is poorly supplied with oxygen will be partially protected from the radiation used in treatment that is uh, those tumor which which does not have higher amount of oxygen concentration that is those tumor region which are hypoxic will be will be partially protected from the radiation used for treatment and also they mentioned that the administration of oxygen may lead to a greater increase in the sensitivity of poorly vascularized tissue that occurs in those with a good oxygen supply like skin but as of now we have seen um, that oxygen is increasing radio sensitivity but now the question is how is oxygen responsible for the enhancement of radiation damage so when radiation is absorbed in a biological material uh, it leads to the production of free radicals and this radiation can uh, can interact in two different ways it can interact either directly or through and indirect action so in case of direct action this radiation or the gamma ray photons goes and interact directly with the uh, uh, with the DNA and causes multiple molecular lesions like double strand break, single strand breaks or other base pair damage and, 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 and many more things and lead to the cell death or in uh, in or it can interact with the DNA or the target with an indirect action in which these radiations go and deposit energy to the cell and we know our cell is composed of 70 to 80 percentage of water and it lead to radio lysis of water and it produces free radicals and these radicals uh, these are highly reactive molecules and these radicals uh, break the chemical bonds and it produce uh, changes and initiate the chain of events that results in biological damage and these 
uh, and these radicals uh, are unstable and it will react rapidly with oxygen if present to produce RO2 radical and which then undergoes further reaction to produce RWH in the target molecule and thus uh, we have a stable change over here in the chemical composition of the target and the damage is said to be chemically fixed or this damage is permanently fixed over here or but in the absence of oxygen uh, the presence of radical um, uh, so in the in the absence of oxygen or in the presence of reducing species this radical um, it have a longer half-life and it can react with the protons and it does chemically restores it to the original from uh, uh, without the need of biological or enzymatical uh, intervention so in um, brief we can uh, keep in mind that's the oxygen fixation hypothesis that oxygen fixes or it makes permanent the damage produced by free radicals so it, it interacts with the damaged dna and causes peroxidation and these peroxides and these hyperperoxide are toxic to the cells and in this way it lead to the cell death so one thing you should keep in mind that cell death is is, is more responsible um, because of the the uh, because of the unprepared damages so whenever a cell absorbs a defined uh, radiation dose for example that's a cell and it absorbs a defined radiation dose it due to the creation of multiple molecular lesions like double strand breaks single strand breaks and that and it's the number of unrepaired double strand breaks or single strand breaks which lead to the cell death and more preferentially there's the unprepared double strand breaks because so for example suppose you have an initial radiation dose and there are significant amount number of double strand breaks but that's not uh, the end of treatment because uh, because our bo our body has a defined uh, a mechanism to restore everything to repair these damages and if it restores back then that's the failure of therapy so that's the number of uh, unrepaired double strand breaks that causes cell death that's not um, the damages but that's the number of unrepaired damages that's critical for the cell lethality so in our next video we'll talk more about the tumor microenvironment in more details and and thank you so much for watching these videos if you like this video please do like share and subscribe to this channel and support me making more videos like this in future so thank you so much for watching